This is the video review for Transformers Revenge of the Fallen Voyager Class Bludgeon. Um, this is one that I have um, certainly been waiting for. Um, I love Bludgeon. I love the character. Um, and, and I love even before even before they made him into like a total hoss in the uh, in the comic book. I loved Bludgeon because he was back when I was a kid. He was the only pretender I owned when I was a kid. Um, I remember buying him at the PX, a um, little uh, shopette type place on base when we were living at Gunner Air Force Station back in the uh, back when I was a kid. Um, I remember buying him one day. I remember talking my mom into him. I liked him, and um, he went everywhere with me. And I think he got thrown out in the great toy purge of whenever I didn't clean up under my bed one day. <laughs> um, but, uh, so I missed him, but he's, he's always been one of my favorites. And then it turns out he turned into a real awesome guy in the comics, so that doesn't hurt either. But so yeah, very excited to have him, very glad to have him here. And, um, and super cool. Um, this guy is supposed to be an upgraded version of the uh, Wreckage repaint from the Whirl and Bludgeon 2-pack. You can get it at Toys R Us, I think. Um, and, the, and the bio on his box explains that uh, Whirl basically beat the crap out of him. And um, so he took a new body and ran off into the jungle and is now you know, baiting Ironhide out to fight Ironhide. Um, which is Jungle Attack Ironhide is kind of his rival. Um, he's part of the new Nest Global Alliance subline of Revenge of the Fallen figures where they're really trying to build up um, character rivalries between, between between characters like Dirge and Armorhide and Bumblebee are all kind of like Armorhide and Dirge are rivals that are coming out soon. Um, Bludgeon and Ironhide. Now, I'm trying to think what some of the others are, but, but yeah, they're, they're they're building up rivalries, which is pretty cool. Anyway, onto the figure itself. You can see it's a, uh, I believe it's a, it's been referred to as a Japanese Type 90, or at least based off a Japanese Type 90 tank. Um, he's mostly green. He does have this handle sticking out here. You don't have to. Give that in if you don't want. You can pull his sword out. That's his little sword for robot mode. Um, but it stores right here in his uh, in the side of his tank mode. Um, the, the guns do have a tendency to warp a little bit. It looks like in package, but um, I haven't done it yet. But you heat those up with a hair dryer or soak these in water, with some warm water, and bend them back into shape and let them cool, and they should be fine. Um, one of the main questions a lot of people have asked is does this turret rotate? And yes, you'll see his turret can rotate an entire 360 degrees. Um, so no worries about the turret rotating there like that. Um, and that's really about it for tank mode. He doesn't have a whole lot of action features or posability here in tank mode. Though this little gun can turn up here as well. Um, again, a full 360. Um, but other than that, that's really all the action you're getting out of tank mode. Um, transform into robot. I find it helps to go ahead and just pull his small little wakazashi out. And if you pull on his turret... He's got a giant sword there. Um, take the tank, turn him over like this. Now one of the first things you want to do is right here, you want to pop these rubber treads off. Um, they don't, they're not, they're not working. This piece in the middle is solid plastic, um, but they are rubber treads, so go ahead and pop those off. And once you pop those off, go ahead and fold all four of them. Are capable of folding in half to go ahead and fold those bits up. Just like that. And you want to come back to the back of the tank here and split uh, this whole section off for his, to form his legs. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take this, we're going to untab this, this waste piece tabs on right here. You're just going to lift this up. This whole piece down here, we're going to rotate around like this. We're going to lift these pieces up like this um, and flip them up. And while you're doing that you want to flip these up and around and then these maroon pieces actually I'm going to get these down around like this. Once you get these on the other side like that these maroon pieces uh, you want to push them all the way until they snap in like that. And then again get this up over the side here and then snap it in. And you can see these folded up tank treads kind of fold up up into these waste pieces here. Um, and when you fold this piece up, there's a little, on this side, there's actually a little extra, you can see the gray bars, there's an extra piece on this gray bar that pops up this sheath, or your holster, yeah, sheath, I guess, over here on his left hip. Uh, fold that down a little bit. We'll actually leave this folded up like this. 
um, down here in the feet. You want to rotate this so the orange pieces are facing forward. Then open up this, and then flip up this back panel and down like that. Lift this up and then flip his feet out. And then just close that back up. Lift that up and up. Just kind of fold that down. However you position that however you want. Again, flip this down, fold this up, flip the foot out, fold that down. Pull the foot all the way flat. And again, you can position that panel however you like. Um, he does have a little bit of mech alive there in that. Um, you know, I mean, you can kind of see these like metallic pieces rotate when you rotate his shins. It kind of looks like bones. You know, he's a very skeletal warrior, and it kind of looks like bones underneath the armor, which is kind of a neat effect um, for the mech alive gimmick. I um, mean, you want to come up here, split these pieces like this, and then rotate them down. Rotate them down, and then you want to take the arm and rotate them down and around. Just like that. Flip out his hands. And then pop these panels down like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take these legs. You'll see a couple little notches right there on the bottom of this. And you just want to push this up. It can take a little bit of force to get it started. Push it up, and then push it all the way until it clicks. And then fold that piece down. That reveals Bludgeon's head. And there you have Bludgeon in robot mode. Um, you can, if you want, rotate this turret so the gun isn't sticking straight up, but you'll find that um, just the way it's hinged, it actually sticks up further behind his head. But if you'd rather have him look like he's having a backpack instead of a gun, uh, you can do that. And once you, yeah, once you get all the, the pieces in the right place, he's actually quite stable standing up. Which is nice. Um, so you got that done. And there he is. Um, arms. He's got hinges up here. Swivels. Um, elbows. He's got kind of double jointed elbows. There's a joint here and a joint here. I mean, wrist. His fingers, sadly, I thought they were going to be articulated, and they're not. They're not individually articulated fingers. His hands are all one piece. Um, his head does turn. Um, and his legs, he's got, you know, ratchet hips. Um, he does have knees. Uh, they're ratchet knees. Um, swivel. And then he's got hinged ankles. Um, like that. Uh, his secret mech alive gimmick in robot mode is if you grab this piece up here and open it up, out pops a, a sheath that um, holds his miniature sword. So you can store that on his back like that. I usually I don't pull it all the way out in robot mode. I like to just kind of leave it like that so it's popping up over his shoulder. And um, again, there's the sheath over here. You can put his samurai sword through. Or you can hold it. And you do have to use a little bit of force to snap the sword into his hand. It's like this. Um, it's not too bad. I'm, it's, I'm not worried about breakage. Um, but with the soft plastic of the sword, it will bend the sword just a little bit if, you, if you're pushing really hard. Um, but again, like I said, I've, warpage is really easy to deal with. Um, but there you have them. Um, very cool. Very nice. Um, I think it does a great job of evoking his pretender shell. There's still some green on him, but it definitely looks like the outer, outer robot of Bludgeon, while his vehicle mode is obviously the inner robot's vehicle mode. Um, just a quick comparison. Uh, there he is compared to the bludgeon from the Toys R Us set. So you can see he's a, a lot bigger. A little bit more spindly, you know, a little bit more skeletal. I like how his arms kind of look like skeleton arms. Um, a lot of nice design cues. I know some people complain about the head. I think the head looks a lot better in person than pictures make it look. Um, it's still it's still not great. I mean, it's it, but it's it's not the, the best skull head I've ever seen on a toy, but it's not bad, and I, I, I do think it looks better in person. Um, I'd like to see it look a little bit more skull-like, but um, I'm not really complaining. You can kind of see his eyes. I don't know if I can get the detail up that close. Um, but he, he does have some robot eyes etched within that red, so it's kind of cool. I, th I think maybe if you painted around his, where his robot eyes are black, it would look really cool. Or even just painted his eyes black and left the red around him also would look cool. I'm um, just bringing out that detail a little more, but there's a lot of detail in the face that 
really hasn't been captured in pictures yet. Um, but yeah, overall, just really excited. Really, th he's a really awesome figure, and, and I'm glad he's here. Um, Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen, Voyager class bludgeon.